Hey everybody, how's it going? It's Russell Matthews and I'm back with another Canadian update for you. And today we're going to talk about a bunch of things that are happening in Canada right now, including the CRA and how they've sort of changed their minds and then gone back on changing their minds and how it's providing even more confusion to people applying for their benefits. Also, the holder of one of Canada's highest positions has resigned amid allegations and actually a report detailing how there was a toxic work environment and how they may have abused people emotionally while working in this environment. Then there's even more drama and more tension brewing between Canada and the US along with some of Canadian's individual premiers over this whole Keystone XL pipeline being cancelled by Joe Biden. And finally there have been some small businesses in Canada that have come up with some creative to say the least ways to get around the lockdown guidelines that have been forcing so many small businesses to close. To start off, last week the Globe and Mail reported that Canada Revenue has been targeting artists who need to pay back the CERB. And it has to do with the question of whether or not grant money that has been given to support them as artists is actually included in income to allow them to apply for these benefits. And this could apply to you even if you're not an artist because the way they handle this situation could speak to how they're planning on handling the situation when it comes to the mass CERB repayment due to the whole net gross income issue that we've talked about before here on the channel. But only a few days after this article was released, the CRA went back and they they said, hey, you know what, we actually are going to let you use grant money to apply. This came as a huge relief to many artists who get the majority of their income through this sort of grant money because in a lot of cases it's difficult to make ends meet just by selling your art and you can apply to these sort of Canada Council for the Arts and other organizations to get grants to support you as you create. But on January 22nd, Global News reached out to the CRA and they got a different answer and they say that the CRA told them that it will determine if an artistic grant money counts as income for CERB on a case-by-case -case basis. Of course leave it to the CRA to make things a little bit more confusing than they might need to be. But to the best of my understanding, based on this article, it seems that grant money will be able to be used if it is considered the money that you are paying to yourself from this grant, not the money that you are paying out to other people to help you on a project. So for example, let's say in 2019 you applied for and got a grant to take a band on tour. You wouldn't be able to consider the entire value of this grant, only the money that you paid yourself from it. And if that sounds familiar, it's a lot like the whole net gross issue that we've been talking about here on the channel when it comes to CERB repayment. For people who apply for grants, it seems like the CRA is sticking strong that is your net grant income that is actually considered self-employed or employment income. And it seems like that could be the policy that sticks around for people who are hoping to not have to pay back their CERB based on this whole issue. The CRA seems to be taking a pretty hard line, but I'll keep you posted about what they say. Next up, Julie Payette is Canada's Governor General, or at least she was until a report was released earlier this week claiming that she had created a toxic work environment in her workplace and had emotionally harassed people in her office. Now, for the vast majority of the time, the role of Governor General is more symbolic than anything, sort of taking the place of the Queen, because technically that's the top form of government for Canada. But it also does have some important responsibilities, such as signing off on new laws created by the government in something called Royal Ascension. But now that she's left her office, the pressure falls mainly on Trudeau, who was the one who appointed her to this position in the first place. He appointed her more personally than previous governments who had worked with a group of people to select who this next governor general should be. And now, questions have been raised about whether or not Julie Payette should be able to receive the yearly money that she gets for having filled this position for any amount of time. Now that amount of money is over double the amount that the average Canadian makes in a year. So should she still be entitled to this yearly amount of money even though she uh, exhibited some less than favorable behavior? Now that's one of the questions that the Prime Minister is going to face in the coming days or perhaps he'll try not to answer it at all. Next up, tensions are rising even more when it comes to the Keystone XL pipeline. If you don't already know, President Joe Biden signed an executive order essentially canning the entire project that some Canadian provinces have sunk millions and millions of dollars into. I am, of course, disappointed with this choice to workers, especially in Alberta and Saskatchewan, who've been hit hard. We will continue to have your backs. We will always stand up for good Canadian jobs. 
but how much he's actually willing to fight Joe Biden on this decision is up for debate right now. You see, the premiers recently had a meeting with the prime minister in which they talked about this Keystone XL problem. And many of the premiers, especially Premier of Alberta, Jason Kenney, uh, he's not so impressed with the way the prime minister is sort of gearing up to handle this issue. Kenny isn't entirely convinced that the prime minister is going to take as hard line as he needs to when they have the conversation with Joe Biden. And Kenny is actually saying that the Canadian government should impose sanctions on the US government over this pipeline cancellation. But some people have been suggesting that the prime minister and Jason Kenney alike both should have recognized that this was a possibility as it's something that Joe Biden had been planning on doing since before he was elected president. So maybe it seems that the prime minister and Jason Kenney were both sort of gambling on the fact that Donald Trump might get reelected and sort of pushing this issue down the uh, down the pipeline until they would actually have to deal with it in the eventuality that Biden was elected. But now that day has come and the prime minister is set to have his first conversation with the new president on Friday night, which as of right now when I'm recording this hasn't happened yet. So there's a chance there's new information out. Uh, if there is, let me know down in the comments what I've missed. And finally, some small businesses have found a really creative way to sort of get around the lockdown extensions that have been happening. And this comes just after BC formally extended the provincial state of emergency uh, another extra month. As of right now in British Columbia, theaters aren't allowed to operate, but uh, bars and restaurants are able to in limited capacity. And that's why the Rio Theatre is now deciding to consider itself a sports bar. They're going to be selling popcorn, food, and beer, and it seems like the BC government actually isn't all that upset. A spokesperson from the Ministry of Health said that if they are fully licensed and the conditions are met under the order, including an approved safety plan, then likely, yes, they could operate as a restaurant or a bar, and that this demonstrates the ingenuity of a long-standing BC business in unprecedented times. But the response was not so friendly for a similar situation that currently is happening in Ontario, where the whole pandemic situation is a little bit more serious. In this instance, it's actually a Niagara area barbershop that's using the film exemption that's currently going on in Ontario to be able to cut hair. They sort of saw that it was a little bit uh, not fair that people could go to a movie set and have their hair done to be part of the cast, but people who wanted to just get their hair done wouldn't be able to. They were not greeted with the same sort of response that was had in BC. Instead, they were told that there was going to be an investigation launched and that they could face serious consequences for sort of trying to skirt the rules like this. To get around the rules, the hair salon was taking videos of their clients as they were getting their haircuts and calling them auditions. No matter where you stand on businesses reopening in the whole lockdown, you have to admit that is a pretty creative use of the wording of these reopening acts. And that covers it for today's update. If you have any thoughts about any of the stories we've talked about, let me know down in the comments below. And also feel free to join our Discord server where there are tons of people talking about benefits and anything related to this Canadian news. So you can find Find that community down there in the description. And if you enjoy seeing Canadian content like this, the number one thing you can do to help out the channel is to send this video to somebody who you think might enjoy it. And with all that said, thank you so much for watching everybody. I hope this video helped you out at least a little bit and I'll see you next time.